11월 9일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경 통독 오늘 말씀은 11기하 22장 히브리서 4장 요엘서 1장 10편 140편 141편 말씀입니다. November 9th, 2nd Kings 22. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 31 years. His mother's name was Jedidah. She was the daughter of Adiah. She was from Boscoth. Josiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He lived the way King David had lived. He didn't turn away from it to the right or the left. King Josiah sent his secretary Shaphan to the Lord's temple. It was in the eighteenth year of Josiah's rule. Shaphan was the son of Azaliah. Azaliah was the son of Meshulam. Josiah said, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest. Have him add up the money that has been brought into the Lord's temple. The men who guard the doors have collected it from the people. Have them put all the money in the care of certain men. These men have been put in charge of the work on the Lord's temple. Have them pay the workers who repair it. Have them pay the builders and those who work with wood. Have them pay those who lay the stones. Also have them buy lumber and blocks of stone to repair the temple. But they don't have to report how they use the money that is given to them. That's because they are completely honest. Hilkiah the high priest spoke to Shaphan the secretary. Hilkiah said, I've found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Hilkiah gave it to Shaphan, who read it. Then Shaphan went to King Josiah. Shaphan told him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the Lord's temple. They've put it in the care of the workers and directors there. Shaphan continued, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. Shaphan read some of it to the king. The king heard the words of the book of the law. When he did, he tore his royal robes. He gave orders to Hilkiah the priest, Ahakam, Akbor, Shaphan the secretary and Isaiah. Ahakam was the son of Shaphan. Akbor was the son of Micaiah. And Isaiah was the king's attendant. Josiah commanded them, Go, ask the Lord for advice. Ask him about what is written in this book that has been found. Do it for me. Also do it for the people and the whole nation of Judah. The Lord is very angry with us. That's because our people who have lived before us didn't obey the words of this book. They didn't do everything written there about us. Hilkiah the priest went to speak to Huldah the prophet. So did Ahakam, Akbor, Shaphan and Isaiah. Huldah was the wife of Shalom. Shalom was the son of Tikva. Tikva was the son of Harhaz. Shalom took care of the sacred robes. Huldah lived in the new quarter of Jerusalem. Huldah said to them, The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, Here is what you must tell the man who sent you to me. Tell him, The Lord says, I am going to bring horrible trouble on this place and its people. Everything written in the book the king of Judah has read will take place. That's because the people have deserted me. They have burned incense to other gods. They have made me very angry because of the statues of gods their hands have made. So my anger will burn like a fire against this place. And the fire of my anger will not be put out. The king of Judah sent you to ask the Lord for advice. Tell him, the Lord is the God of Israel. He has a message for you about the things you heard. He says, your heart was tender. You made yourself humble in the eyes of the Lord. You heard what I spoke against this place and its people. I said they would be under a curse. I told them they would be destroyed. You tore your royal robes and wept in front of me. And I have heard you, announces the Lord. You will join the members of your family who have already died. You will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the trouble I am going to bring on this place.
Hulda's answer was taken back to the king. Hebrews chapter 4, God's promise of enjoying his rest still stands. So be careful that none of you fails to receive it. The good news was announced to our people of long ago. It has also been preached to us. The message they heard didn't have any value for them. That's because they didn't share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enjoy that rest. God said, when I was angry, I made a promise. I said, they will never enjoy the rest I planned for them. Psalm chapter 95 verse 11, ever since God created the world, his works have been finished. Somewhere he spoke about the seventh day. He said, on the seventh day God rested from all his works. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2, in the part of scripture I talked about earlier God spoke. He said, they will never enjoy the rest I planned for them. Psalm chapter 95 verse 11, it is still true that some people will enjoy this rest. But those who had the good news announced to them earlier didn't go in. That's because they didn't obey. So God again chose a certain day. He named it today. He did this when he spoke through David a long time later. Here is what was written in the scripture already given. Listen to his voice today. If you hear it, don't be stubborn. Psalm chapter 95 verses 7, 8, suppose Joshua had given them rest. If he had, God would not have spoken later about another day. So there is still a Sabbath rest for God's people. God rested from his work. Those who enjoy God's rest also rest from their works. So let us make every effort to enjoy that rest. Then no one will die by disobeying as they did. The word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than any sword that has two edges. It cuts deep enough to separate soul from spirit. It can separate bones from joints. It judges the thoughts and purposes of the heart. Nothing God created is hidden from him. His eyes see everything. He will hold us responsible for everything we do. We have a great high priest. He has gone up into heaven. He is Jesus the Son of God. So let us hold firmly to what we say we believe. We have a high priest who can feel it when we are weak and hurting. We have a high priest who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. But he did not sin. So let us boldly approach God's throne of grace. Then we will receive mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it. Joel chapter 1 A message from the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Here is what Joel said. Elders, listen to me. Pay attention, all you who live in the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your whole life? Did it ever happen to your people who lived long ago? Tell your children about it. Let them tell their children. And let their children tell it to those who live after them. The giant locusts have eaten what the common locusts have left. The young locusts have eaten what the giant locusts have left. And other locusts have eaten what the young locusts have left. Get up and weep, you people who drink too much. Cry, all you who drink wine. Cry because the fresh wine has been taken away from you. The locusts are like a mighty army that has marched into our land. There are so many of them they can't even be counted. Their teeth are as sharp as a lion's teeth. They are like the fangs of a female lion. The locusts have completely destroyed our vines. They have wiped out our fig trees. They've stripped off the bark and thrown it away. They've left the branches bare. My people, mourn like a virgin who is dressed in the clothes of sadness. She is sad because she has lost the young man she was going to marry. No one brings grain offerings and drink offerings to the Lord's house anymore. So the priests who serve the Lord are filled with sorrow. Our fields are wiped out. 
The ground is dried up. The grain is destroyed. The fresh wine is gone. And there isn't any more olive oil. Farmers, be sad. Cry, you who grow vines. Mourn because the wheat and barley are gone. The crops in the fields are destroyed. The vines and fig trees are dried up. The pomegranate, palm and apple trees don't have any fruit on them. In fact, all the trees in the fields are dried up. And my people's joy has faded away. Priests, put on the clothing of sadness and mourn. Cry, you who serve at the altar. Come, you who serve my God in the temple. Spend the night dressed in the clothes of sadness. Weep because no one brings grain offerings and drink offerings to the house of your God anymore. Announce a holy fast. Tell the people not to eat anything. Gather them together for a special service. Send for the elders and all who live in the land. Have them come to the house of the Lord your God. And pray to him. The day of the Lord is near. How sad it will be on that day. The mighty one is coming to destroy you. Our food has been taken away right in front of our eyes. There isn't any joy or gladness in the house of our God. The seeds have dried up in the ground. The grain is also gone. The storerooms have been destroyed. The barns are broken down. Listen to the cattle groan. The herds wander around. They don't have any grass to eat. The flocks of sheep are also suffering. Lord, I call out to you. Fire has burned up the desert grasslands. Flames have destroyed all the trees in the fields. Even the wild animals cry out to you for help. The streams of water have dried up. Fire has burned up the desert grasslands. Psalms 140 and 141 Psalm chapter 140 For the director of music A psalm of David Lord, save me from sinful people. Keep me safe from those who want to hurt me. They make evil plans in their hearts. They are always starting fights. Their tongues are as deadly as the tongue of a serpent. The words from their lips are like the poison of a snake. Lord, keep me safe from the hands of sinful people. Protect me from those who want to hurt me. They plan ways to trip me up and make me fall. Proud people have hidden their traps to catch me. They have spread out their nets. They have set traps for me along my path. I say to the Lord, You are my God. Lord, hear my cry for mercy. Lord and King, you save me because you are strong. You are like a shield that keeps me safe in the day of battle. Lord, don't give sinners what they want. Don't let their plan succeed. Those who are all around me proudly raise their heads. May the trouble they planned for me happen to them. May burning coals fall on people like that. May they be thrown into the fire. May they be thrown into muddy pits and never get out. Don't let people who lie about me be secure in the land. May trouble hunt down those who want to hurt me. I know that the Lord makes sure that poor people are treated fairly. He stands up for those who are in need. I'm sure that those who do right will praise your name. Those who are honest will live with you. Psalm chapter 141 A Psalm of David I call out to you, Lord. Come quickly to help me. Listen to me when I call out to you. May my prayer come to you like the sweet smell of incense. When I lift up my hands in prayer, may it be like the evening sacrifice. Lord, guard my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Don't let my heart be drawn to what is evil. Don't let me join with people who do evil. Don't let me eat their fancy food. If a godly person hit me, it would be an act of kindness. If they would correct me, it would be like pouring olive oil on my head. I wouldn't say no to it. 
I will always pray against the things that sinful people do. When their rulers are thrown down from the rocky cliffs, those evil people will realize that my words were true. They will say, as clumps of dirt are left from plowing up the ground, so our bones will be scattered near an open grave. But Lord and King, I keep looking to you for help. I go to you for safety. Don't let me die. Keep me from the traps of those who do evil. Save me from the traps they have set for me. Let evil people fall into their own nets. But let me go safely on my way.